Hello, this is a Knight upright piano, 110 centimetres tall, made in 1966. I'm going to compare it with this Knight K6, which was made in 1972, that's right next to it. The K6 was made in 1972, this one is made in 1966. And you notice the back is absolutely flat, the, the caster doesn't jut out at all. Um, the reason they got it jutting out later on is because the frame was heavier, um, and so they needed something on the back to balance it because they're obviously afraid of it toppling forward. So there's a 1972 piano and uh, that's got the extra bit jutting out. We'll look at the frame in a minute. Now the main visible difference on the frame is uh, on this older one, the 1966 one, it's just like any other piano, you have what we call a brace bar uh, and uh, as we've mentioned before, knights dispense with the brace bar later on, uh, which uh, the idea is to give no difference in tone between this note and that note. So on the 1972 one you'll see that there is no brace bar at all here. So if we play the notes either side of it we'll see what the difference is. So this is 1966 with the brace bar. And there's a difference in tone. Very slight but there is a difference. And on the 1972 piano obviously there's no, not going to be any difference. Just very even gradation of tone. Back to the 1966 one. We have a look at this Steinway's 1920s odd Steinway here, 1936. And very little dome difference there. And this Grotrin Steinberg in 1938. A very slight difference again. And here's a new Foric. So again, there's a slight difference. The one on the left tends to be slightly brighter and perhaps not such a deep tone. All new pianos are like this. It's, this, this type of construction is on all new pianos. None of them have a continuous pressure bar. Now the construction down the bottom is exactly like any other piano really. A new piano look very similar on the 1966 night, this one. And this is the 1972 night. Uh, you'll see that the frame goes right th down to the edge. So a much heavier frame, that's why they needed to offset the casters at the back. Um, extremely stable pianos. Now apart from that, this 1966 Knight shares all the wonderful features of the younger ones. Uh, so it's made to, to be exported to the Commonwealth mainly. So they've got this plaque on, on the younger ones as well as this one. Now I'm extremely impressed with the tone of this 1966 one, apart from the very slight difference you get there. It just has a beautiful mellow tone. This is this 1972 night. So this is a summary of the assessment sheet. Um, one thing I, did, I noticed is that the legroom is 61 centimetres, which is fine, uh, but the pedal height was too high, I think, 8 centimetres, so that can be reduced. And what we do to reduce that is to put some felt above the pedal so it's angled slightly further down, uh, as you can see there. So that's just built on temporary, we'll stick that on permanently, obviously. And uh, now it's obviously got to operate properly, so the dampers have got to shut off. Um, we've got to adjust the pedal if necessary, so it sh shuts off. But there's plenty of movement there, so we're able to, to, to get the angle a little bit further. And it's more comfortable to, to play then. So that's a nice upright piano, 110 centimetres tall, um, made in 1966. And there's a few differences between this and the later ones. Whether they didn't do the continuous bridge, that's uh, getting rid of the brace bar um, at that time, I'm not sure. So if you're in the trade and you can you are tuning nights perhaps and notice when they started to make the dispense with the brace bar, it'd be really useful to know. The tone of this one certainly is like the tone of all nights. There's a very, very slight difference where the brace bar is. 
but I particularly love this night. It's just that night were so fastidious in their construction, and as we said before, Steinway Hall, the only piano as far as I know they had at that period of time, apart from Steinway's, was nice, because the small Steinway isn't a particularly nice piano. At least that's my opinion anyway. Uh, at least the nice is an extremely good piano, so they were really pleased to stock them. Really stable, and uh, well, we've said many things about nights before, but I wanted to feature this one because it was different. And also because it's a particularly special one. So. All pianos vary, obviously. All nights are good pianos, but it depends how much they've been used. This one's had very moderate use at the beginning, and it's just a beautiful tone. And the touch, too. We're going to perfect the touch. That's one of the things on the worksheet. It's not far off, actually, but just a bit of evening out to make it like a new piano. So if you want to practice the piano, you want to learn the piano, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't have an, a night instead of a new piano. It's going to cost you less money as well. And certainly cheap new pianos aren't very high quality anyway. By the way, night dampers go right up to the same note as Steinway's do. I think it's that C there. Sorry, I just checked and it was actually the A and I checked the Steinway's too, which all go up to an A. So that's more than most pianos. I just checked and a U1 Yamaha 1970s goes up to here and a Forek, new Forek goes up to there. So the Knight and the Steinway go up the, more than any others. I think there are some Knights that go up to top C as well. Um, if you can remember, if you're in the trade, that'd be useful to know. But just one of the things that Knight's attention to detail. So if you're interested in the piano, please do let us know, info at robertspianos.com. Um, if you want to try the piano out for a while because you can't come here, then we do a, a scheme for that. Please look at our rental scheme on the website. Thank you very much for listening.